I live right next to a Navajo reservation and have made friends with many of the people there my age. We like to hang out, play video games, and just be normal teens. I walk over a lot since my best friend lives a little less than a mile away from me. This isn't a long trek and usually only takes me about 25 to 30 minutes. I have made this trip dozens of times and have grown very comfortable with it. I know the people along the way so I'm not scared or on edge. There is a patch of forest however about midway there. It's a little unnerving sometimes and there's always that feeling of being watched. This was a regular occurrence for me, so I tried to just ignore it and shake it off as my mind was playing tricks on me. This day I spent more time at my friend's house than I meant to, and when I left, it was already getting dark. I reached the stretch of forest right as the sun disappeared from the sky. I shivered a little as I readied myself to begin their journey through. I was ten steps in when I heard a branch snap. You know the sound. The one that screams, there's definitely someone or something there with you. I froze, not sure what I should do next. Should I run? Should I turn around and book it back to my friend's house? I didn't know the best option in this situation. So I whispered, hello, hearing my voice crack as the words fell from my lips. I don't know why I even opened my mouth, but it was out there so I listened for any reply. My heart sank when the answer came back in the sound of my voice. Hello? I started to breathe too fast. My heart pounded against my chest. I felt like I might faint. Hello? My voice came again. Enough from my mouth. I wanted to run, but my feet felt cemented to the ground. I couldn't scream. I couldn't reply. As my voice echoed and, and over and over again from a short distance away. I couldn't pinpoint exactly where it was coming from. It sounded like it was everywhere around me. Hello? 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 It repeated. Stop it! I finally managed to tear from my lips, and everything went silent. For a long minute, nothing happened. The air grew stale, and I realized for the first time that there were no typical forest sounds. There were no bugs, no frogs or crickets. Nothing. I stood there terrified, waiting to see what would happen next. Stop it! It mimicked back. I'd had enough and was willing my heavy legs to move. Before I could take a step, I heard rustling in the bushes 20 feet to my left. I watched in horror as a deer head with huge antlers protruded through the brush. As it came further out and stood up on twos, I took off. I flew out of those woods and all the way home in record time. I said nothing to my mom when I got there. I just went up to my room, laid down, and thought about what happened. My mother came in at some point and asked me if everything was okay. I replied that yes, I was just tired. I don't know why I didn't tell her. I guess I might have been afraid of how she'd react. I called my friend and told him everything. He freaked out and told me that no matter what happened that night, to not reply or look out my window. This terrified me even more. He said to call him the next morning and he would explain more, and that he had to speak to his grandfather as soon as possible. That night, I didn't sleep at all. I stayed awake, listening to every little sound the night brought. Around 3 a.m., just as I was about to drift off, the air changed. The night sounds quieted, and I felt my heart begin to pound. I lay there and waited, pulling the covers up over my head like a child, far too scared to move. It came after a long moment. Hello? I cried. It was all I could do. Hello? Stop it. It mocked what I'd said in the woods again. It was terrifying enough when it copied what I said, but then it did something new. It called my name. Amy, my mother's voice. Amy, Amy, come here. Hello, stop it. My voice again. For the rest of the night, the creature outside my window called my name in my mother's voice and repeated what I said in the woods over and over again. In the morning when the sun broke through the dark, it finally stopped. I fell into a fitful sleep. I woke around 12 to my friend calling to tell me he had spoken to his grandfather and could explain what happened to me. So he said there was a creature they called Yi Naldushi. He who goes on all fours, or a skinwalker. He explained there was an evil witch that used dark magic to transform into an animal with the attributes it required and that it had caught my scent and knew me now. I was also given a warning that since it knew me, it would always follow me. 
that I would always have to be careful. Last night I heard scratching on my window, then a low hum. The creature began saying my name again, but also adding in things I hadn't said, in my mother's voice. At one point it started calling my name, but drawing it out really far, like, Amy. It tried to get me to come outside or to open the door and let it into my house, and this went on all night. At this point, I feel like I'm going crazy. I don't know what to do. Is it really going to stalk the shadows around me for the rest of my life? I don't think I can handle that. I guess I'll start with a background. I'm a 33-year-old female, but this story takes place when I was a teenager living in a suburb of Chicago. The village I lived in was quiet and middle class. We lived like a mile from the police station, and the worst crimes we had was one murder, maybe two, and a robbery. Once in a blue moon. 99% of the time, uh, just boring. Unless you had a car, you were stuck just walking around the park at night with your friends. Just kind of boring. Anyway, one night, my girlfriend and I decided to go hang out at a park with some guys at around 12 a.m. The night was a bit windy and had a full moon. I even got a kiss that night from the boy I liked. But the night wasn't just fun and hanging out late. There's a deep forest in the park with a stream with a playground right next to it. The same playground we went to with swings and jungle gym columns. And there's two bridges, one made of wood that everybody uses and one made of rocks that's rarely used and deeper into the forest. And that one's over the stream, connecting the two halves of the forest and park area. So we hung around on the swings and chatted and just spent the evening together. I'm sitting and just looking around, talking and enjoying the peace and quiet in the moonlight. I have a full view of the forest and the dip of earth that I know leads to the stream. And I see something moving over that dip of earth. Something dark shape. It looked like it was crawling out of the forest. An arm, then another arm, and it pulls itself out of the ditch. A figure darker than the surrounding forest. I'm sitting there frozen. I think I'm seeing things. It just kind of lays there on the ground, but doesn't move. A flash of fear grips me. What if it comes this way? And I look at my friends and no one notices anything. I look back and it's gone. Did it go back or go somewhere? I really want to get out of here. Then one friend asks, Did you guys hear about that urban legend of the rock bridge over the stream? Apparently some kids or something played on the bridge and fell over and died. Yeah, what a thing to say after what I saw. But I didn't ask anyone anything and just pretended I didn't see anything. But the experience stuck with me. I never talked about it because it must have been my imagination. Things like that happen only in scary movies, right? But I rarely went to that park after that. And, well, dark figure, if you're real, I hope we never meet again. Who knows what would have happened if you saw me the same time I saw you. Okay, so I don't really know how to start this story off, but it just happened an hour ago, and I'm still spooked. So a bit of a preface, me and my friend are home alone right now and have been for a few hours. Every time he comes over, we go to the woods by my house, and it's normally uneventful with some throwing rocks and breaking trees and stuff, you know, harmless fun. But this time, something else happened. Like I said, we're home alone and have been for a while when this happened. We went outside to go to the woods, and the trip there was, you know, uneventful like usual. But once we get there, something was off. Everything was dark. Tons of trees had been knocked down, and the entire place was not like I remembered it being. We kept going in, still having our usual harmless fun, and at one point, my friend turned to me and said, We should go back. I looked at my phone and decided it had only been 30 minutes, so we might as well stay longer, because it'll be a few hours until anyone wants us to be home. We continued on, finding a few strange things, like an old crushed Mountain Dew can, probably 10 to 20 years old, and a toy boat, which had been completely destroyed by the elements, and was probably even older than the can. Our plan was to go further than I had ever been into the woods, which really isn't very hard for us, because, well, I'd barely been that deep. After walking for a while, we came to a landmark I knew of that marked about the deepest I've ever been. A while ago, when I was going far in, I came upon a bridge built on a log that fell over a river in the middle of the woods. However, one thing was different. 
there was something sitting on top of it. Whatever was on it was small and resembled the head of an animal. When we got closer and got a good view of it, it was a deer skull, pearly white and clean, sitting on the bridge, with no clue as to who put it there and where the rest of it was. Behind the river there was a huge hill with a creepy small house on it, and while we were looking around I heard a creak or some other high-pitched noise from up towards it. Freaked out, we began to run, and from behind me I hear my friend scream, and I hear him running behind me. We both keep running, and once we reach the edge of the woods, we step onto the road. I asked him why he screamed, and he said he heard footsteps next to him. We quickly made our way home, and when we got there, the garage door was open. Not knowing if it was left open or not, we ran inside, locking the door, checking the house, and turning the alarm on. Now we're sitting here, and by the time I finish this, it's nearly two hours since this happened, and I still can't shake the fear of the eerie woods from me.